I understand a hundred percent. Are you ready, choir? Let's go ahead and stand number 13. Father alone. Here is the song for the discouraged Christian today. Father alone. You know, the Bible says we see through a glass how? Darkly. We, we don't see the total picture, but praise God we will someday. That's one reason I love this old, old hymn. Father alone will know all about it. Mr. Seth.
pastor mentioned the word discouragement this morning, and boy, I tell you what, that's one tool that Satan uses. He uses it on me. I know he uses it on my pastor. I know he uses it on every one of us to get us discouraged. It, uh, it is a battle that we'll fight. As long as we live on this earth, we'll fight it. But this song says, I know who holds tomorrow. There's so much to look forward to. We don't have to worry about what's going to happen. God's got us in his hand. I know who holds tomorrow. Amen. Okay, Mr. Savior. about tomorrow brother Scott I don't understand there's a lot of things that are going on in this world that I just simply don't understand but I praise God nothing has caught him by surprise and uh, I thought of a verse that our pastor preached on this morning out of John 10 28 it says he's, he's talking about the sheep and he said and I give unto them eternal life that them is us and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So this song just seems to fit, sheltered in the arms of God. Amen. Amen. Okay, clock. You sound good.
Kenneth Loveless has a has a favorite song. I guess we all have favorite songs, don't we? My problem is about all of them are, are my favorite song, but I agree with Kenneth. It's a precious song. It's called Come Morning. It's speaking about home that we're going to go to someday and all this strife that we deal with, all this tension and pressure. It's going to be a wonderful place. Just think about it. It is a wonderful place. And it's Come Morning, Kenneth. It's coming. There you go. Yes, it is. Yes, you say. God's children to love has been burdened.
the song. Choir number 335. Hang in there, Kenneth. Come morning. Oh, <laughs> praise God. Just to think about it, Brother Scott is enough to get to. <coughs> His brother always says you mule out of the barn. He, uh, our pastor often talks about all the promises that are in the Bible, and it's, it's full of them. In his sermon today, he, he preached uh, the one from Isaiah 41.10. What a verse. Do you remember what he said? Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I need some strength. Don't Amen. you? Amen. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee Amen. with the right hand of my righteousness. Now, that's a promise from God. What are Amen. we saying about those promises? 335, the old, old hymn, standing on his promises. Will you stand with us? In this <coughs> last song, we'll do the first, the second, and the fourth verse. Standing on the promises. Mr. to say it.
Well, we welcome you back to Sunday evening service, and what a joy it is to see you back tonight. And this is Father's Day, and I hope that you, uh, I hope that you took care of Dad in a wonderful way today. And let me, uh, Jenny Blackwell, let me give you an update on Jenny. She has been admitted to Sycamore Shows. Hospital. She's in room 307. Um, she did not have a heart attack or anything, and they're keeping her over the night for observation. So uh, continue to pray for Sister Jenny. Lift her up. Uh, remember, Wednesday evening service, we'll be having a business meeting. And then uh, uh, the 2nd of July, Patriotic Sunday. Uh, man, I don't know if you realize the, the greatness of freedom. I'd rather be dead as be read. Amen. And, uh, and then on Sunday evening, we're moving from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, we're going to uh, have a, uh, I'm going to say a uh, 4th of July rally service and then we're going to have hamburgers hot dogs and you ladies are going to bring all that good good stuff that goes with it and what's one thing we always got to have you got that right and uh, we'll have a meal and then we're going to have a fireworks display now i need uh, this is not in the budget to buy fireworks all right I'll, uh, I need some help. If any of you will make a donation to buy the fireworks, we should, would appreciate it. They said this wasn't illegal. Who said this illegal? illegal? Well, everybody told me this morning it's legal except one. Huh? Yeah. They are what? They are illegal. They are illegal. illegal. Now, time out. Let's get this clear. They are illegal. We can't shoot them. Well, why don't they do something with all them people shooting them around my place? The jail ought to be full if that's the case. Well, I will find out this week, okay? I ain't going to find out no legal advice from none of you. <laughs> but remember, the 4th of July with fireworks or without fireworks, okay? <laughs> Got sparklers. Well, that's the most dangerous thing you can handle. Sparklers. So uh, be, uh, be much and uh, remember that... Uh, Service. And by the way, do you, your family and, and all, uh, we're, uh, I, I mean, listen, uh, try to get them to come that night, 4th of July, family, uh, be a good time to have a family reunion on the hill. And just come out that evening, okay? All right, if our men have come, we'll receive our Sunday evening giving. You give as the Lord has blessed and prospered you. Let's bow and ask the blessing on giving. Brother Scott, would you pray for us? Our Father tonight, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Yes. Mercifully, Lord, we thank you for giving the unspeakable gift of our dear son, the Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank you for our Savior tonight. Thank you for the shed blood. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that he arose on that third day. Yes. At our right hand. And God, help us, Holy Spirit, impart his truth to us, God. Help us to see it. Help us to understand it. Oh, yes. I pray that each of us be ready. Yes. And uh, Lord, I pray for one that might be here tonight, never been saved, never been born again to the family of God. Yes. Yeah. see the day of his or her salvation. And Lord, we'll rejoice with the angels in heaven, Lord, if that sinner that repents of their sin. Yes. Puts their total faith and confidence in the finished work of Christ on Calvary. Lord, thank you for the word of God tonight. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Amen. Amen. Take your Bible tonight and turn to the book of 1 Kings chapter 21. As I announced to you this morning, the title of the message is Not for Sale. Not for Sale. And God gives us the truth of that Naboth refuses to sell his vineyard. What does it cost Naboth? not to sell his vineyard. It cost him his life. And we don't know what it would cost us to stand for biblical truths and biblical convictions today. And may I just encourage all of us next for this week, uh, Sunday school, let's really work to uh, look around and see who wasn't in your Sunday school class this week. Uh, make, you know, people, people all the time say, well, preachers were such and such and such. How many of you believe there ought to be somebody in church cares besides the pastor? Amen. How many of you believe there ought to be somebody in church trying to go encourage them to come back besides the pastor? Just as, if all of us are doing it. And let me just encourage you this week to really uh, uh, think about those, to get them to Sunday school and get them to church uh, next Sunday. And be encouraged in the Lord. Uh, uh, don't let the devil uh, rob you of your, uh, uh, your, your victory and your joy. Uh, but 1 Kings chapter 21, we're going to read uh, verse 1 down through verse number 16. Listen to this truth from the Word of God about Naboth tonight. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Remember, this is right in during the time of the division of Israel, the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was, uh, was Israel, the capital was Samaria. Uh, the southern kingdom was uh, the two tribes of the southern part was Judah and Benjamin, and the capital was Jerusalem. And Ahab is the king of the northern kingdom, which is Israel. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is nearer unto my house, and I will give thee for a better vineyard that, than it, or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. I want to buy you what? I want to buy you vineyard, Naboth. But notice what Naboth said. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it that I should give the inheritance of my father unto thee. And Ahab came unto his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my father. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face, and would not eat no bread. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him, and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad, that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreel, like, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if I please thee, 
I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee any vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Does thy not govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread and let thy heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and the nobles that were in the city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and set two men, sons of Belali, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him, that ye may die. And the men of the city, even the elders and the noblemen who were the inhabitants of the city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them. And they proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belali, and sat before him. And the men of Belali witnessed against him. Even against Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee, for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, and Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. What a story. I hope you understand the truth of this message tonight. I'm afraid today we've got a lot of people that sold out. I'm afraid today we've got a lot of people in government. I'm afraid today we've got a lot of city officials. I'm afraid today we've got a lot of people in authority today that are sold out for that slimy stuff called money. How many of you know the reason we've got to have all this infrastructure in America to our highways? Anybody want to make a guess why? Because when they was building them, they're supposed to have had inspectors that were inspecting the cement and the steel and everything that was going by. And many of an inspector stuck his hand out and somebody shook it and put a wad of money in his hand and he's turned his head to watch things go in the, in the buildings of things that should never have gone there. I'm telling you, I'd love to go back to live in an honest society, wouldn't you? I'd love to go back and live in a time when man gave you his word, you could go to bank on it, he would keep it. I mean, listen, I don't, today in our political arena, it seems to me like everybody's a liar. And can I tell you something? You lie to me one time and I'll always be suspicious. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight for this story in the Word of God, the truth about Naboth's vineyard. Help us to understand why, why Naboth would not sell it. And I pray tonight, Lord, that we would realize there's some things tonight that's not for sale. I pray every child of God in this place tonight would have some God-given convictions about what they believe, why they believe it, and that they'll be firm to stand for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I pray tonight, Lord, that you would minister to our hearts about this great need of taking our stand. Lord, we're in a few weeks here, we'll be celebrating 
uh, our day of freedom, the 4th of July. Help us to realize, God, freedom ceased to be when freedom ceased to cost. And I pray tonight, Lord, there will be a people that will desire to walk in the, the freedom and the way of life of government, but I pray tonight there will be some people that bit, want to be free in the liberty of the grace and the power of God as they live their life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Not for sale. Naboth would not sell his vineyard because of biblical conviction. If you'll write these verses down and go back and look at them, especially Leviticus chapter 25, verse 23 through verse number 28, God set down a standard for the family and for the land and the inheritance and all that had been given to that family and all. And see, if Naboth had sold Ahab the land, he could have not have got it back. See, uh, 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 Naboth understood how important his family was. Naboth understood how important his family heritage was. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. We need to stop and realize what we've lost in our country. There was a day... Man, that we, we had a heritage in this country. There was a day when things meant something to our forefathers and, 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 and the families that many of us come from tonight. Listen, I am afraid many today don't have the convictions of a Naboth. And by the way, it cost Naboth his life. And I believe there's some things tonight worth, worth dying for, don't you? Listen, there's some things tonight worth dying for. I don't know about you, I made this statement a few weeks ago, I think on prayer me, uh, when we was praying to the men and all, we were talking some of the things there. I said, you know, uh, they ought to be some politicians and ought to be some uh, Hollywood characters and they ought to be some uh, politicians in our country have to go down to Havana and live and Havana for a year the way the people in Havana have to live and they might come back and appreciate this country. I tell you the reason a lot of people don't appreciate this country, they don't realize what they've got. They don't realize what the rest of the world is living like. And, 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 and the sad part about it today, there's been so many people brainwashed. And, and hey, listen, to be a Christian doesn't mean you have to throw your brains in the garbage can. Use your head. And use it for something instead of knocking on wood, all right? Use your mind, and God gave it to you to think and to reason. You know, God said, come down and let us reason together and think about some things. And tonight, let's think about some things tonight that ought not to be for sale. I started to say I'm going to be brief and short tonight, but I understand every time a preacher ever said that, look out. Let's think about some things tonight we're to die for. Let's think about some things tonight that's not for sale. Let's think about having some God-given convictions about us tonight. First thing I want to say to you tonight, my Bible is not for sale. My Bible is not for sale. This is God. The last week in Bible school, we spent five lessons on our Bible. I tried to teach the class about how did we get our Bible? How do we know that we can trust our Bible? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the inspiration of the Bible and the truths that we look to uh, this past week in Bible study and, uh, to the adult in, in Bible school. Listen, my Bible's not for sale. Uh, listen, the translation into the English language, the King James Bible, hey folks, as long as I'm pastor of this church, that will be what we preach from, what we teach from. Well, you say, Brother Roy, I, I, I think that is just plumb uh, ignoramus to believe that you are to have the King James Bible. Well, if it's the best translation and you believe it's the best translation into the English language, why would you stand for anything less? Amen. Huh? I'll ask you, I used this illustration this morning in, in my Sunday school class. If here's a table with a T-bone steak, just fix the way you like it, a big old baked potato smothered in butter and sour cream, and a big old tossed salad there that, I mean, just fixed right, and a big glass of iced tea, and then for dessert, a big old bowl of banana pudding. Why in the world would you want to go over and eat in a slop trough when you can have that? 
Why in the world take second, something second best when you can have the best? And I believe that's the best translation there is into the English language. Now, listen, I'm not a heretic that says if you believe and read some other version, you're going to hell. I believe there's enough in John 3, 16 and almost all of the English translation. If you believe it could get saved, I'm just saying if you want to be a real good student of the Bible... Why don't we stick to, I hear this all the time. Well, I just can't understand that old English. I don't have a bit of problem of understanding when God says, Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt be faithful to church, thou shalt give, thou shalt witness, thou shalt pray. I don't have a bit of trouble understanding to you. I think the problem is they don't want to understand it. My Bible is not for sale. I believe the Bible. I believe it's the Holy Bible. I believe it from cover and cover. And I believe the cover, the Holy Word of God. I believe it's the Holy Verbal. We learned this in Bible study. I believe it's the Holy Verbal, inspired, inerrant, plenary uh, uh, Word of the living God. That's what I believe about this Bible, and it is not for sale. Hey, listen, I need. I want to study it. I want to read it. I want to memorize it. I want to hide it in my heart. I want to walk by its precepts and its truth. I want to... I want to be submerged every day of my life. Hey, how many of you just need a good spiritual bath tonight? And get real honest. How many of you got so much junk in your mind you can't even think right? I mean, listen, you, you've, got, you've got your mind all collated up with all this junk. Hey, go home tonight and sit down for about an hour and a half and have a good, have a good Bible reading and Bible study and get up in the morning and get another bath. Maybe during the midday you might have a little more cleansing in the evening. I mean, just take this word and let it clean your life up. Somebody said, preacher, your preaching goes in one year and out the other. Bless God, I'm glad it does because if it goes in one year and out the other, it cleaned everything in between. <laughs> Some of you got a pretty clean mind now, haven't you? Hey, the Word of God, it will, this book will lift you up. This book will give you the mighty help. This is the greatest tool that is ever God can use in your life to encourage you and help you and get up and run the race that is set before you. This is a book that help you wake up in the morning and look at the morning and not say, oh, it's another day. This is a book that help you to wake up in the morning and look out and say, bless the Lord. This is the day that you've given me. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'll have victory in my soul. Oh, listen. My Bible's not for sale. My Bible's not for sale. But by the way, if you're not reading it, you're not studying it and if you're not living by it you've already sold it that didn't get a lot of amens did it huh oh me oh me second thing's not for sale my nation's not for sale my nation's not for sale I, I'm gonna tell you something there's sometimes I you know I'm a redneck hillbilly red runner and there's some things that just makes my blood boil. When I watch them, they, they, I mean no respect for that flag. I mean, listen, when, when I watch them burn the flag and desecrate the flag and spit on the flag, I'm going to tell you something. There's some of them more to thank God they want one redneck preacher there when they's doing it because somebody got whipped. You say, preacher? You mean you really feel that way? Yes. I'll go fight for the freedom I've got. I'll still fight. And I believe it's time that we realize this nation needs once again to rise up in holy units in the grace of God and say, hey, we've took all we're going to take. This nation, my nation's not for sale. But I'm afraid today the enemy is taking our, our nation over. I've quoted this to you many a time. 
bad men rule this nation because good men have stayed silent. What if you think if I run for state senator? Well, glory to God, I might just kick my campaign off tonight. I never will forget a few years ago. I came in, this is when the boys was probably in high school. All of them was home. I come in, boy, I was, I said, I'm going to run. I'm going to run for state senator. I'm going